cat interviews at uber confluent indeed and many many more companies i have seen it all after countless hours on the other side of the table i know exactly what top companies are looking for especially in nld in this course i'll share the insider blueprints what to focus on especially key design patterns how much multi threading very important counter question traps and how to tackle them confidently this course is structured practical and tailored on what companies are looking for right now let's get you into ready right now Now next we are proceeding forward with singleton design pattern now singleton design pattern simply says that okay you will have only one instance of anything mostly it is used in db connections and you know that locking mechanism primarily used where you require centralized management of resources it can be logging systems configuration management db connections caching this is made on anything where you need a centralized management of system which means you want just one instance to be created which means that all of them refer to just one object which is being made no multiple loggers no multiple connections just one because multiple will actually lead up in wastage of resources now again you might ask iron why and how obviously it will have increased memory usage because if we have multiple instances of it it will have inconsistent logging it will have if let's say if i'm writing to a file the file access conflicts will be there duplicate entries can be there so there are multiple issues which can come up setting how your architecture is designed now why do you need a single logger instance again i am referring logger but it can be db connection as well it can be any resource management as well it can be anything literally so why do we need one because we want all of these logs to go to a same location it can be a file db console anything whatsoever we want all the entries to remain consistent to the entire application whatever we have if i have multiple such logger systems it will never be consistent anything will you know anything will not be consistent and obviously if things are consistent things are same it is easier to debug and also monitor and manage now let's see how a very simple you know logger class would look like you know it's a very simple logger a simple class having a function just logging out a specific message now another person as you can see earlier i was logger so another person let's say application just have a run method in which he just asked and make a new instance of logger so is it an issue technically not really yet because now you created a new instance by yourself because you had a freedom and you can do it as you simply do by a constructor so i did that i made a new instance but the same any again right now application did that but if any other class let's say user let's say you know admin anyone can actually make it again so multiple instances of logger can be there based on if there are multiple people who can just initiate it because no one is stopping them right no one is stopping them it's freely available you have to stop if you want them not to make it you have to stop them but right now i'm not stopping them so everyone will create you know start creating their own loggers and everyone will end up performing the same job ultimately based on the resources now what will happen user they will create another logger now i have two loggers here which ultimately performing the same operation so what happen you will obviously end up having a lot of issues primarily one being multiple instances you know if you are logging to a file each logger might act try to access it and write at the same time obviously leading to either conflicts or maybe uh, your performance overhead next thing could be inconsistency you know these conflicts will actually cause inconsistency in logging obviously like log will be scattered and you know will not be consistent across the entire log files which we have now next it will be very difficult to manage the state for example obviously uh, let's say if you are maintaining corresponding state in log file or maybe any configuration now every instance could have different settings for it and that is you know here and there things will start creating inconsistency on how logging is being happened or managed and even stored so what to do now huh? try to make just one instance which means firstly the main culprit of who can make an instance it's a constructor i will say bro what are constructor we have as you can see you make instance by a simple logger so you i will say okay what are constructor i will i will have i will make it private that no one else should be able to make that specific call to a logger instance if i made this private then who will instantiate it i can make another method which will instantiate it it can be let's say get logger now this is this has the job of instantiating it what i will do i just make it static so that i can call this from the class itself 
because I won't rightly call this get logger function, right? And then I will have a simple call that, okay, if the logger is already not there, then make it. If it is there, then return whatever you have, which means that I will store logger for a specific class and it will remain as is. If you are confused on all of these things, make sure that you have watched oops section before coming out of this section. Now, so we realized that uh, we can simply utilize this simple condition that if the logger is already made, just return that. If it is not made, then make a new one and then store it in the logger instance. And that logger will remain as is for the entire class. And again, anyone in future try to access the constructor, they will not be able to call it. So they have only one option to call this get logger function and this will store or this will make new, new instance only just once. And that's the beauty of it that we are always good because we will call logger dot get logger, right? And with that, we will be able to simply have a logger instance and that too is just created once. If anyone else in future also try to call this thing now, then obviously because logger is already exist, logger already exists there, then I will be directly able to get that existing logger itself and it will not be created. So obviously it seems very good, right? Yes, it is. So how, what we learned? Okay, we learned that we now did actually utilize singleton design button. Singleton says single, which means only one instance is created and done just saying, okay, that the instance is globally accessible to everyone else so that if anyone else is trying to do the same thing, he will actually get the existing one itself. So you might ask, I didn't buy do we need it? Obviously we have discussed it previously as well, but the entire essence is that any resource which we have, logger, db collection, configuration, we don't want the multiple instances for it because we don't want them to compete against each other for any access or resources. We want them, okay, they should utilize sufficient resources of what they need. And if they need one, one instance, we'll be good with it. Obviously, they will be easier to manage, more efficient in terms of, you know, more fast, having better resources to, to like with them, and also consistent across the entire application and having no conflicts and no issues as such because of each other instances. Now, the thing is, what's the issue with the above approach? Is there an issue with the above approach which you saw? Uh, if you see very carefully, you will figure out that you have a very small issue that, you know, uh, the issue is that, let me come. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go into this issue later on, but just a quick thing which I just wanted to show that this is the corresponding diagram which we can see on the right side. And again, the same thing which we saw previously as well um, is shown here where just it is just to show that we have private, we have static, we have public static. And again, we are just calling that specific logger itself. And again, as we have already discussed about some real life examples of it, we go into issues later on. But yeah, as we discussed, as we discussed some examples above as well in the very beginning, same we are repeating here that we have logging systems, we have database connections, we have configuration settings, and we have thread pools. Obviously, in that, they are primarily, again, you will see in production code bases as well, loggers doesn't need to be specifically have, you know, in one place, but still, many people would not follow these, these things. Again, they don't need to follow, but obviously, if we are following it, we will have a better resource management in our entire system. Obviously, in the logging system, which we have discussing so far, we will keep the log messages consistent and organized. That's the best part to it. And again, memory and sources being utilized, that's also one point to it. Next is database connections. Obviously, we will have a single connection throughout the application, right? Because that's sufficient for us, right? We can have multiple access to it, but yeah, we can just make one connection to it. Now, uh, configuration settings, obviously, uh, all the configuration settings remain consistent across entire application. And again, thread pool is roughly the same thing is to manage corresponding resources. Uh, we don't need to create unnecessary threads, which will obviously slow down the entire system which we have. Now, as we're discussing, is there an issue with the above system? You know, when we stopped off, we realized that it seems okay, but it seems okay only when there is, you know, one thread accessing it. But in actual production goes with code bases, we have multiple threads which can access, you know, your single function, piece of function. So what will happen? Let's see if let's say there are multiple threads which are trying to access it. So what will happen that let's say there are two threads, thread A and thread B, thread A and thread B. So thread B, let's say try to come here and thread B simply again. Okay. Uh, I don't know why this thing 
got so much bad in terms of image but okay let me show you that what what will happen is that okay you have this thing right you have this piece now thread b will try to enter here now thread b considering he saw okay instance is null he entered now thread b hasn't assigned this yet but then the same point thread a came here he also saw it is null because again thread b hasn't assigned it yet so thread a saw it is null he also came inside and thus you will see thread b also created a logger thread a also created a logger you wanted only one instance to be created but because of this race condition your both the threads actually end up creating your instance that is the reason your threads were competing against each other to create an instance and by mistake because again you had two threads you created two instance if you were having four threads you might again the word is might because thread you know you never can predict the behavior of a thread when it will come when it will try to you know check for it and all that stuff so obviously you might if you would have four threads you might end up creating four instances in worst case and that's the issue that both these threads can actually create a new instance which is an issue how can we make it thread safe obviously we can use synchronize block now that's the benefit of java as i have been telling so far that the biggest reason why i switched to java for ldd especially is because of its you know small small functions and the readiness of functions different functions which you have so that the things become very easy don't don't you don't need to apply log mutexes all that stuff no not required simple you can just use a synchronized block what this says synchronized is a keyword basically in java just which is used to control the access to a critical section of the code isn't it so simple that you would you are using just one keyword and it will make sure that only one thread will execute any block at a, at a given point in time and that's so beautiful again this can be in a block level as well this can be as a function level as well that's the beauty of beauty of synchronized although in very deep we'll be discussing when we will be discussing on concurrency in java in this portion we will we'll be discussing that but still just as an idea this is the beauty of synchronized keyword so what we will do obviously we will have a synchronized keyword now if a thread a has entered no other thread will be able to enter no other thread so thread b will simply wait outside it will simply wait wait here if thread a has entered it will have to wait outside no matter what now thread a thread a will simply check if i was null i will make a new logger and then i will uh, re return the instance i will get out as thread a gets out then thread b able will be able to get inside as he gets inside he will say okay this is already there i will not make it i will simply return whatever i have existingly there are you happy yes we should be happy because now multi threading is actually handled now but is it efficient that's the question the question is that uh, if you have literally many threads right let's say thread a thread b thread c thread d and let's say the first time you know that okay one thread will be able to get inside this specific block and other threads will wait outside you know they all will wait outside one thread went inside and then it was null in the very beginning so it made a new instance it made a new instance and then it returned it okay now i have an instance now i have an instance thread a made an instance okay great now another thread has to go inside so thread b will go inside now because obviously again it is on the entire function method so again only one thread c and d will again wait but do you see an issue here the issue is that now the instance is already available right but i wanted them to wait in this portion when i'm making a new instance right that's the issue that i don't want them to wait entirely i only want them to wait when the instance is made but if it is already made then all of them can come together and then simply return it why i am letting the others wait you know on a thing which which you don't need so that's an issue because of you are you are you, you know you are allowing them to wait for literally every call each thread will literally wait and that's unnecessary unnecessary performance overhead which you will have which will ultimately slow down your application and application being slow down obviously uh, which means that uh, to make it fast you will use more resources more resources obviously will need more money and obviously you are spending more money but having slow speed how to manage this we will manage this by double checked locking same thing which we saw just now that 
instead of the synchronizing every call, we will just check that when the instance is null, only then check that, okay, I will synchronize it, which means I will let only one thread go inside. How? Let's see. So I will just do a very quick modification. I have removed synchronization from here, right? And I will check, okay, if the instance is null, if yes, only then synchronize this block. Now this portion is synchronized. So what, what is the benefit? The benefit is that if it is not null, it will, it is never synchronized, which means outside things are never synchronized. If it is not null, every thread can directly come and return the instance. They don't have to wait on anything. But if it is null, then I will synchronize, which means now I will ask it. I will ask the thread to go inside, which means that when it is, you know, null, I will ask it to go inside and then, and then I will simply make it. Now you might ask, Arun, why have you written again? Why can't I simply remove it? You can remove it. Let's say if you remove it, what will happen? You know, the instance was null. Three threads were there, A, B, and C. A got the chance to come inside because it was synchronized. B and C have also come inside up to this point. They are waiting for the synchronized block to complete. So what will happen now? A will make it and A will simply return that. Okay, A got out of, out of the picture. Now, B and C, they also were waiting. They got the chance because A went away. B will come inside now. <laughs> Did, do you see a mistake? Because now B thinks, okay, I got the liberty because I saw the instance was null. So I came inside. Now I am thinking that, uh, okay, I should create a new instance. But he doesn't know that A, when he came inside, A had already made this. So I have to have a condition that if it is already made, even after I got the chance to come inside, I will still check. Maybe someone who got the chance before me has, has he already made it? Yes. If it is already made, then simply go and re return that instance. If not, then only I will make it. That is the reason you need to have this second check also inside your synchronized block. Cool. And this is how you can simply and easily achieve your singleton design pattern in any of the multi-threaded case. Now, lastly, as a conclusion point, singleton design pattern ensures only one instance exists for anything, whatever you are making, primarily object, and it simplifies the resource management and also utilizes these resources to, you know, utilize as minimum resources as possible because you are not now duplicating, you are not duplicating the corresponding logger, you know, db connections, all that stuff. It is thread safe implementation will be done via double check blocking because that's how we realized that multiple threads are tried to access it. We can actually handle via a double check blocking. And this will make sure that we are actually, actually following that singleton design pattern in its spirit. Because ultimately most of the codes are actually having multi-threading in them. Now, lastly, it is actually used a lot and asked in many interviews a lot and has literally real world applications as we saw previously as well. You know, TB connections is one of the most commonly known, logging is another most commonly known and also it reduces the memory usage and also obviously will improve the efficiency of the system. Make sure that you understand this piece very, 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 very carefully. This is very, 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 very important. Cool. Let's achieve the light target of 250 likes. See you next video. Well, goodbye. Take care.